Could zombies be another extension of life? Mick has known Celia since he arrived on the property, and they both agree that zombies are another form of human and shouldn't be treated as monsters, they felt like kindred spirits in this belief. However, Victor disagreed with this approach, as he believed that allowing the bitten loved ones to roam as zombies wasn't setting them free. He shoots his lover outright, enraging Celia. She gave Victor a day to bury the dead and then ordered him to leave the estate. Madison and the others were not allowed to stay either. Madison has to come to terms with this, even though everyone is very reluctant to go back to their uprooted lives. Nick sees it coming, so he brings Celia's zombified son Luis back from the cruise ship. In Celia's eyes, as long as Luis wasn't shot in the head, he was still her child. Celia now appreciates Nick even more. Nick promised that his family would not harm anyone, and Celia reluctantly agreed to let them stay. But Victor was not allowed to remain and had to leave. Madison, however, was worried about Travis's safety. Chris had previously left the estate, and Travis went looking for him but hadn't returned yet. Nick decided to go out again to find Travis and Chris and bring them back. Nick finally found Travis and Chris after great difficulty, but Chris was still in a rebellious state, and Travis chose to stay with him to help him overcome his psychological barriers, temporarily refusing to return to the estate. Nick realized that persuading them further would be futile and bid farewell to Travis. Meanwhile, something else was happening at the estate. Daniel had become increasingly paranoid since discovering the estate's eccentricities. Whenever he had the chance, he wanted to leave this place of evil, dragging his daughter along with him. Eventually, Daniel clashed with one of the estate guards, using his homemade blade to injure the person. As a result, Celia locked Daniel in the basement. Celia was skilled at manipulating minds and continuously urged Daniel to repent. Later that night, while the guard was feeding Daniel, Daniel knocked him unconscious with a headbutt, took the guard's keys and lighter, and had visions of his deceased wife who advised him to protect their daughter. Madison also began to notice that something was off with Celia. She felt that her son, Nick, had changed significantly since meeting her. Celia was pleased to have Madison join her family and took her to where the zombies were being kept. Madison was shocked by the scene before her the zombies were having their dinner. Celia asked, wouldn't you feed your children if they were hungry? This confirmed Madison's suspicion that Celia was indeed a monster. Madison slowly backed out of the room and locked the door behind her. Celia remained expressionless. Later, Daniel arrived at the room and poured gasoline inside. He started to have hallucinations, seeing the zombies as they were in life, begging him for release. He even saw his wife smiling at him. Daniel dropped his lighter, and the fire instantly covered the petrol. Madison arrives at this point to look for Daniel, but the place has gone up in flames. She had to tell Ophelia that her father couldn't make it out. Victor, who had left but returned to rescue them, saw the flames and came to their aid. Madison wanted to wait a little longer for Nick and Travis to return, just as they were preparing to leave. Madison saw a figure in the distance covered in zombie blood. It was Nick. He said that Travis didn't want to come back for the time being. Nick asked his mom what happened here. Where's Celia? Seeing his mother's silence Nick knew that the destruction of this place must be due to his mother and the others. Nick was completely disappointed turned and ran towards the zombie horde. In Nick's eyes, his family was scarier than the zombies. Nick decided to search for a place that didn't view zombies as monsters. The next day, the surviving maid provided Nick with some supplies and told him to head north, where there were human bases, alone. Nick embarked on the journey to the north, his body covered in zombie blood to avoid any trouble from the zombies. By nightfall, Nick was exhausted and found shelter in an abandoned house. In the middle of the night, a figure approached slowly. A woman, seemingly insane, attacked Nick with a baseball bat, claiming the area as her territory. Nick tried to explain that he just wanted his backpack and would leave. But the woman's madness escalated, and Nick had no choice but to escape. With no supplies, Nick continued his journey northward. Looking at the zombies in the cars, he felt no fear, as zombies were much simpler to deal with than humans. Every drop of water became essential for Nick's survival. While fiddling with a radio, he spotted an approaching off-road vehicle in the distance. Nick quickly hid. Three men got out of the vehicle, seemingly enjoying killing zombies for fun. They scrutinized the car and found an old man who had survived dehydration. The old man asked for help. They shocked Nick by their ruthless behavior. If they found him, he knew he would be dead. Just then, the radio started making noise, taking a risk. Nick rushed out, and the three men started shooting at him. Nick realized that his only chance of survival was to run into the nearby woods, using his agility to dodge countless bullets. Exhausted, Nick didn't know how long he ran, 
but the intense activity drained him of much energy. The scorching sun even left the cacti dehydrated. Desperate for water, Nick crushed a cactus and tried to drink its fluid, but it only made him vomit, and he even resorted to drinking his urine. Nick woke up the next day to the dog barking. He had to climb onto the roof of a car to escape them, but not without getting bitten on his leg. Helpless, Nick lay on the car roof. At this time a group of zombies in the distance attracted. The dog directly crazy pounced on the zombies. The end can be imagined. It didn't take long for the dog to be eaten clean by the zombies. The zombies then closed in on Nick. Nick closed his eyes and prayed. Suddenly, in the distance, he heard a car horn and gunshots. It should be the three people who were previously chasing Nick. Seeing the zombies walking away, Nick forced himself to eat a piece of the dog's corpse. Nick tied up his injured leg with a belt. His body was coated with zombie blood. Nick just walked among the zombies. In this moment, Nick felt an unprecedented sense of safety. He almost felt like the zombies were telling him, follow us, and we'll take you home. The zombies soon reached the highway, heading towards the location of the earlier gunshots. Sure enough, it was the same three men, turning their killings into a sick game. Every day, their enjoyment was a competition to slaughter zombies. Nick knew that if he exposed himself, they would torture him to death. As the zombies around him gradually fell, Nick remained composed and walked with them. The men's bullets were now panicking on the ground. Another chubby man was tackled by a zombie. Their companion drove away, leaving them behind. Nick continued to walk with the zombies, unaware that someone had already noticed his uniqueness. Eventually, Nick succumbed to dehydration and collapsed. These three don't look like bad guys, but they don't choose to save Nick either. After all, life is hard in the post-apocalyptic world. Nick felt death approaching, but miraculously, a heavy rain woke Nick up again, and he desperately drank the rainwater. He then arrived at a small town, starving after two days without food. The priority now was to disinfect his leg wound, but the pharmacy was emptied long ago. Nick had to use duct tape to roughly bandage the wound. Just then, someone came through the door with a gun. The same guys who watched Nick from afar yesterday. Nick hurriedly explained that the wound was from a dog, not a zombie. Luciana confirmed it and gave Nick some water. They brought Nick to a clinic to treat his wound, where Dr. Alejandro disinfected it. Alejandro asks Nick why he's traveling with zombies. Nick explained that he was searching for a place that didn't see zombies as monsters. Without saying a word, Alejandro opened the door, and Nick stepped outside, feeling an unreal sensation. The town was prosperous and bustling, with people shopping, exercising, and children enjoying happy lives. This was the place Nick had been seeking. The next day, Nick woke up from the most comfortable sleep he had experienced in the apocalypse. However, when he went outside, he found the lively streets empty, except for a teary-eyed little girl calling for her father. Looking in the direction she pointed, Nick saw everyone gathered there. A man came to Alejandro and handed over his dagger. After saying a final goodbye, the man stepped into the bus and followed the carriage all the way to the rear of the bus. This abandoned bus was the only passage leading out of the base. The man walked into the midst of the zombies, not knowing what was happening. Nick didn't want the little girl to witness the bloody scene. The villagers chanted something like a sacrificial spell, and the man's screams echoed in the sky. Afterward, life returned to normal. Luciana found Nick and brought him back to the bus. Luciana looks cold in the face of Nick's questioning. Luciana arrives in the middle of the zombie horde. After a series of actions, she scolds Nick to keep quiet at all times, and then smears zombie blood all over her body. They were planning to go outside again. Their purpose was to exchange supplies with other surviving bases. Along the way, Nick finally learned the truth. The actual leader of this base was Alejandro, a devout believer. Luciana had witnessed Alejandro being bitten by a zombie but not turning into one, which elevated his status among the people. Anyone bitten by a zombie would be sacrificed to the deceased, thus protecting their loved one's safety. They arrived at the trading place, a large supermarket occupied by a group of survivors. They were well armed, and almost all surrounding bases came here to exchange supplies. Luciana offered her medicine, 
which was supposed to get two carts of water but was now limited to one cart. The interior of the supermarket was very spacious, and there were many people guarding it. Their families lived inside the supermarket as well. Nick took one look at a sickly woman, a clear sign of addiction, medicines they can only exchange, as they were preparing to leave after getting supplies. A man rushed forward and tackled Nick, quickly finding a pack of snacks on him. Luciana was also furious at this. Nick is in danger of having his hands chopped off. Translate for me. Ask him if that's his sister in there. Is that your sister in there? Ask him. Can he say? Due to the difference in race, Luciana reluctantly acted as a translator. Nick then said, Your sister's had a drug attack, hasn't she? They're the only ones with the drugs. If you don't let me go, they won't come here to exchange supplies anymore. Without the drugs, your sister will turn into a zombie within a week. Now, not only do you have to let me go, but you also have to give us another cart of fresh water. Nick knew he had taken the right gamble. On their way back home, Nick was pleased with the extra cart of water he obtained. However, Luciana isn't happy because Nick's reckless behavior could cost them their lives. And hiding the location of their base from those people is crucial. Back at the base, Nick gave the pack of snacks to the little girl who had just lost her father. Luciana witnessed this scene and realized that Nick had brought the snacks for the girl, which changed her perception of him. Later, Alejandro called Nick for a conversation and reprimanded him for his actions at the supermarket. Alejandro tells him it's not the snacks that really give people hope. It's keeping them alive longer term. The medicine they used for exchanges was running out, and they needed a new solution. Nick finally realized how close he came to causing a disaster. Alejandro was a competent leader who has built a base of survival in this apocalypse and has also given people the conviction to live. The next day, Nick approached Alejandro with a can of powdered milk and presented a bold idea. As a former drug addict, Nick knew how to replace drugs when they were scarce. Using the equipment at the settlement, Nick crushed the remaining medicine, mixed it with powdered milk, and compressed it into more medicine, that buys the base a long time to survive. Since then, Nick has become more comfortable on the base and has developed a rapport with everyone. He went out every week to exchange supplies. In appreciation of Nick's contributions, Alejandro prepared a room specifically for him, which made Nick thrilled. Even though they spoke different languages, being given his own place represented true acceptance from the community. That night, Luciana visited Nick's room for a heart-to-heart -heart talk and their relationship deepened. What happened to Travis and his son who left? Travis sat in the back of the car, his face full of melancholy, gazing ahead, to accompany Chris through his rebellious phase. Travis had to separate from Madison and the others. Chris met three young people on the way, and he felt understood and accepted by them. They arrived at an abandoned farm in the outskirts. The place was deserted but well equipped. Travis wants to stay there, but Chris has other plans and wants to explore the world with his newfound friends. He despises weak fathers. Chris relished the feeling of being accepted by his peers. Inside the barn, they found many chickens, providing them with a meal for the night. But outside, Travis discovers graves under the trees. Realizing that the farm owners may still be there, Travis tries to persuade them to stop trespassing on other people's property. They ignore Travis, and Travis is left to control his son. A rebellious Chris doesn't respond to Travis at all, and he continues to do what he's doing. A man with a shotgun, the farm's owner, confronted them and asked them to leave. Travis continued to urge the young people to leave, but one of them broke a chicken's neck. Farm's owner shot one of the young men in the knee. Unexpectedly, Chris shot and killed the farm's owner, seemingly enjoying the act. Travis was on his knees, just looking at this strange son, filled with remorse and guilt. Meanwhile, Victor, Madison, and the others returned from the estate, intending to go back to the yacht. To their dismay, they found the yacht had been taken by someone else. They only left one line, the four of them then passed by a large hotel. They stood outside for a long time observing no sign of movement. Then they entered the hotel. Victor rings the bell at the front desk to see if there are any zombies here, but it's clear that it's very safe. Alicia and Ophelia go upstairs to search the rooms for supplies, only to find zombie noises coming from several of the rooms. Victor and Madison have a drink on the ground floor and start sharing their experiences of the post-apocalyptic world. The more they talked, the more they got involved, and they drank a lot of wine without realizing it. Victor was playing the piano and Madison was going crazy. Unbeknownst to them, the sound attracted many zombies. Even the zombies on the upper floors of the hotel were attracted. Victor's drink has sobered up a bit. There are zombies on all sides. Although these zombies move slowly, they are surrounded by zombies, but it is difficult to escape. 